Welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast with Mike Kincaid and Jake Goebel. Join them as they experience specialty coffee and document their journey. These friends explore roasts and roasting methods, brewing equipment and techniques, and review the cafes they visit along the way. Thanks, Brioni, and thank you for joining us for episode 70 of the Orange Cactus Coffee Podcast, where Mike and I talk about our trip to Wild Iris. We talk about drinking some smuggler's coffee. He's got some barrel-aged coffee that he hooked us up with. We try that for the first time ever. We talk about Ronald McDonald and how he's trying to fill the dead zone with coffee and treats. And we talk a little bit about coffee history in the 70s. So I think we got a great show lined up for you. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Heyo, welcome to the Orange Cactus Coffee Show. I'm your host, Mike and Kate. Jake Goble is no longer with us. Uh, we've had a change in direction. We had a change in ownership. We had an initial public offering, and the board said that uh, <laughs> we will offer you, um, you know, sufficient amount of funds for the acquisition on one condition, and that condition was that Jacob Goble must resign. And so effective immediately, he has. Good luck, Jacob, in whatever venture you uh, now pursue, I'm sure you'll think of something uh, you typically do. So yeah. let's get on with the, oh wait, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's wishful thinking. Um, can I get a buyout or something? Uh, and do I have like a non-compete clause or Here. anything like that? Or? Here's your last bag of oh, coffee. Oh, good, good. So I get a cup of coffee, I get a bag of roasted coffee, and then I get kicked to the curb. Is that right? Well, truth be told, this bag right here, if you're watching the video, this bag right here, um, it's, it's purely a prop, and actually inside is, is green coffee. So you would oh, be nice. You'd be severely uh, severely yeah, because I don't have a roaster. Disappointed. Yeah, because I don't have a roaster, and I don't know how to roast. I'd have to roast in a pan or an air popper or something along those lines. Roast in a pan. Yeah. Oh, like a yeah frying pan. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. People can roast coffee like that, Mike. Not everyone has to have the Ilio Bullet R one. No, you don't. You could roast it many yeah. different ways. Yeah. That was good. I was. Um, I'm happy to no longer be a part of it. Go ahead. Uh, you're uh, you're you're on it. So. Take it over. Well, in coffee news today, we want to get right into it. We've got. Well, are we done with the intro? That was a good intro. That was the, probably the best yeah, intro you got, yet. You got to talk into the microphone. I can't leave with you not. You know what I mean? I can't. I, uh. I'll talk. I'll talk into the mic when I feel like talking. <laughs> <sighs> Um, you know, it's like when you this pull someone aside, so, you pull someone aside and you so whisper bad. to them, it's you say, Hey, downhill. I hey. really had high expectations for this show. I thought we were going to do great. And then you, you show up and bomb it right away. No, I thought we we're off to a great start. No, there are people that are heartbroken right now. They took you seriously. They seriously thought that this could be the last time that they hear the sweet and sultry sound of this voice. Crack so? and all beat up nah. from yelling. They know ain't nobody investing in this. There's no board. <laughs> there's no offering. There's no there's buyout. No, there's no profitability. <laughs> None of that be true. I know. If you didn't have me, what would you have? There's no business. I don't know. My life back. I mean, there's, no, there's no business even with the both of us here. There's no business. <laughs> there's just Business implies many you have a way of making hours. money. Yeah, there's just yeah. Many, of, many wasted hours. Well, you can have a business that loses money. Yes, we do that. Quite frequent. Actually, we do that month after month. But anyhow, coffee news. Coffee news. Ronnie is coming for you, bro. I like Ronnie. Ronnie. So this morning I was, um, you know, snooping around on the interwebs, and this is what I found. Sitting there. This is a quote from. Yeah, it, it's. It was such a poorly written article with all kinds of spelling mistakes. It was just. It was terrible, and. Uh, my bro reached out to me because I failed to capitalize the last sentence in one of my posts. And he's like, you didn't capitalize the last sentence, the you know, first word in the last sentence. Mm. And I was like, you should see the articles that pass out there on the Internet these days as legit journalism. They're terrible. Just terrible. So bad. All right. So, so here's right. the deal. I'm going to read this quote to you. It is by Leslie Patton. It was on Yahoo from Bloomberg. McDonald's takes on the fast food dead zone. And this is very, very interesting. At a time when it's standing as the country's dominant fast food restaurant has weakened, its share of the market slipped to 15.1% last year from 17.5% five years earlier, according to, according to Euromonitor. Chief Executive Officer, CEO Steve Easterbrook, 
has identified snacking and coffee as underdeveloped opportunities that could spur growth. The goal is to bring the casual customer in the door more often, Easterbrook said at an investor conference in May. We told you Ronnie was coming for you. The CEO of McDonald's is telling you he's coming for you. Now the board is is releasing the hounds. He's coming for you. They are coming for you. And they even said that um, this was a good one. If they're trying to get 50 cent desserts, a dollar coffee drinks, you're going to see this pop up all over the place. More and more adult lunchables trying to get. Wait, did you do air quotes on that? Yes, I did. I did air quotes because it was quoted in here. Adult lunchables. I thought, I thought lunchables were for anybody. Adult lunchables. No. <laughs> I thought the no. little, little little pizza you could make were A for... A small McCafe chocolate chip frappe on sale for $2. Has 500 calories and more than half a day's worth of saturated fat. Half a day's worth? Yes. I like um, that, that quote you just read, though. I thought it had an interesting line. About um, it's an untapped opportunity for growth. Yes. What was it? Those snacks and coffee. Coffee. Snacks. No, they said something else. What did it say right there at the top? Oh, I'll tell you right here. Yeah. Uh, has identified snacking and coffee as underdeveloped opportunities. As, oh, snacking and coffee. Snacking and coffee. And listen, listen what CEO Nigel Travis of Dunkin' Donuts says. McDonald's dollar and two dollar drink specials are hurting others in the industry. Hmm. He called their discounts pretty aggressive. They are. See, I took that personal. I thought that it meant I could find more opportunity for snacking and coffee. You can. And I need to exploit those opportunities. You can. But no, just know that you're not the only one. No, I'm not. Ronnie has identified that there is more room in the coffee market that is underdeveloped, untapped, unexploited, and he's coming. Duncan has acknowledged that McDonald's has thrown down the gauntlet. Mm. Starbucks has said they're not concerned about the third wave. They don't care. They don't think it's scalable, and they think it's limited to the coasts. Isn't, that, isn't there something there about one of the quickest ways to be defeated is to not properly identify your enemy? Like there, there's elements to that where you don't take a threat seriously and you think they could never dethrone us. Somebody's got to execute. Let the Nobody's horse Nobody's executing. Starbucks is right. Nobody is executing. I don't know who, if I would say nobody. Who is taking over? No. Is, can you name a third wave chain that is taking over middle America? I don't know the plans for intelligentsia, but I know they're taking over Illinois. They're taking over Illinois. They're trying. And they're going. The company that owns them. And they're them. going out to Cali. Remember you read that article a while back. They're trying. They're, taking, they're buying all the. Yeah, the little cafes and colleges. Intelligentsia and like being that. one. And then they're yeah. opening up some more shops and a roastery. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that maybe there's nobody, but it's definitely not at the forefront. Of not like Starbucks and McDonald's. Correct. Yeah. And Duncan is, is regional as well. Mm-hmm. They're more on the East Coast pushing West. They are. There's a big focus on the coast, you know, L.A. or New York. No, that's where the half the Boston. That's where half the world's population is. I mean, makes <laughs> sense. That's where not half the world's population, obviously. That's where a lot of that's the where population. Three point five is. billion people live. Yeah. Hello in L.A. So, uh, but uh, but here's the good deal. Good stuff. Good stuff. All these things are right. Listen to this. Starbucks, oh, okay, which among quick serve restaurants is one of the few who are successful at boosting afternoon visits, has lured customers with treat receipts mm, treat that give receipts. discounts for purchases after 2 p.m. along with pre-dinner happy hours that feature half price frappuccinos. You ever had a treat receipt? Treat receipt? I've had a treat receipt. No, I don't keep my receipts. When you show up in the morning, they give you a treat receipt. They don't even ask you if you want a receipt. <laughs> Uh, what's a yeah. treat receipt? Yeah. It's where they give you a receipt to come back and get a half-off Frappuccino at, after 2 p.m. Oh. They want you to come back. Yeah. Why don't they just open up a Starbucks credit card? It's coming. Right? And, and they just own, say... Their own money. We have our own... Exactly. Yeah. Our own Starbucks. Yeah. That's simple. Do you know what else McDonald's is going for? Experience of Your the future. Your waistline. Oh. Some restaurants are testing display cases that feature items like... Muffin tops, 
petite pastries, <laughs> croissants, and apple pies. Not that kind of muffin top, Mike. With lattice crusts that are baked in store. They want little sweet snacks. Five flavors of muffins, cranberry orange and banana chocolate chunk, as well as cinnamon rolls topped with cream cheese icing. Yeah. Yeah. The most ordered snacks in the U.S. are burgers and fries. All wait, that wait, wait, to wait, wait, say. Wait. The most ordered snacks are burgers? That's a snack in America. Let's just go. You, you want to go to a snack? snack? It's not time for lunch, but you want to go get you want to go yeah. get a burger? Yeah. I, I get and a you, burger, a small fry, small Coke. That's a snack. Oh, it's madness. That's a snack. That's a thousand calorie snack. And then we'll get a coupon to come back later for dinner. Well, that's and then we'll Starbucks. get another we'll get another coupon. I gotta go get my coffee at Starbucks, but no more. You, you can get that that Melita. You can get that Melita espresso mm. at at McDonald's. Yeah, McCafe. Look, Ronnie's coming for you. Plain and simple, bro. Plain and simple. <laughs> But you can't help but wonder or ask the question, okay, how how can you deliver something so good at such a cheap price? Or or is something's gotta give, right? Yeah. How can and they have fifty it, it, cents? And it's specialty cafes go turning away from what makes them special, doing uh pour overs to embracing batch brews. Let's just compete with McDonald's. Let's just They're compete. doing dollar frappuccinos, frappes. Exactly. You can't compete with that. I don't think you Why can. Why would you want to compete with that? Well, you sub- have to be different. You got to be first or you got to be different. You ain't first, so you got to be different. Yeah, I just don't see how, I mean, to me, it's confusing. What's right? confusing? How they can continue to Who's say they? that. McDonald's. Okay. The special the, these coffee chains that want to offer what they they're fast food chain they consider Starbucks is a fast food chain no well they're not a coffee chain not anymore but they continue to say they want to offer specialty goods specialty baked goods specialty coffee they want to promote the quality of their goods while yeah. still making it a discounted dollar menu item and the only way that they they can make you the consumer not stop and think about that is by just bombarding you with marketing so you don't even think about it. Some nice, you know, B-roll um, cinematography in their ads that show uh, how good and delicious these, these you know, staged photos and, and yeah. products look that you don't question, wait a minute, how are they delivering, how are they making a profit and delivering me something that's supposed to be so good, you know, with, with high quality ingredients at 50 cents? It just they're offering something it at doesn't add up. Yeah, I don't know. Either they're know. they're they're arm wrestling the suppliers into providing the goods at, at way below cost, which is something that specialty coffee, you know, a lot of shops yeah. are trying to come against and say we want the producers, we want the whole supply chain to be able to make a uh, an appropriate living off of this. We don't want to exploit anybody just because we're the end consumer and we can yeah. say, hey, we're you know, we're the ones buying your goods. You're going to sell it to us at X, which we know companies like. Walmart and Sam's have done. Yeah. They've been in the news in the past. Yeah. Right? For saying, we'll buy your goods. We're going to be your main supplier, but you're going to provide it at this price. Well, I, I guess the markup for drinks is so great mm-hmm. that they can afford to, at certain times of day where they're not um, getting cash flow, where they're not busy, yeah, they can discount them to get people to come in. Because there's a lot of restaurants that don't make money on food. Yeah. Or they make very little on food, very little well, profit on food. Focused on one item. They need you to buy a drink, a soda, I see. at $2 because it costs them, you know, 20 the, cents. The cup costs 10 cents and the drink costs a fraction of a penny. Mm-hmm. Syrup, carbonation, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So that's where the big markup is. It just baffles me, though, that everything else costs more. Except when you go to McDonald's. Right. <laughs> right? Everything right. else inflates. Right. Well, here's the thing. And that article talks about it. They've kind of been pushing these healthy snacks, healthy snacks. People aren't buying the healthy snacks. And so they're saying, okay, well, that's not working and we have to make money. So we'll <laughs> go back to fattening you up. <laughs> we'll go back to making you, you know, yeah. to selling you junk. Because we know that's, let's just be honest. We all know that's what you want. That's what you want. You want junk. I want to sell you junk. Come on in at 2 o'clock, and I'll hook you up with a special deal on junk. Yeah, we'll give you a snack. Here, here's a Big yeah. Mac. <laughs> yeah, just a snack. Just a little snacky snack. Oh. You know, it's a small chocolate chip Mick Cafe frappe, 500 calories. Just a small. Mm. A little guy. A little guy. It's a quarter of your calories for the day. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that strap that into your intermittent fasting <laughs> profile. No problem. I haven't eaten for 48 hours. I can eat whatever I want here. That's right. And you're going to have a small <laughs> McCafe frappe. There we go. And a Big Mac. Nice little snack to a hold me over. Snack. <laughs> All right. You know who else is snacking out there? Um, every... No, who? Manny G. Oh, Manny. Manny, he don't eat snacks. He ain't got time for that. <laughs> Manny G is snacking on podcasts. That's what Manny G is snacking on. That's true. Information. Manny G recommends. And today, Manny G recommends the Opposites Extract podcast. Mm. Now, the Opposites Extract is a show dedicated to exploring specialty coffee through lively, reasoned, and civil debate about a whole range of topics relevant to anybody who, lo- who works drinks, Loves, hates, dreams about, thinks about, works with, or is simply curious about coffee. In other words, you don't have to be a pro to be pro or con. In each episode, debaters will square off and argue from assigned sides as determined by a random coin toss. Participating debaters pledge to honor and represent the position they are assigned regardless of their personal opinions and perspectives. At the end of each episode, debaters will have an opportunity to discuss their actual thoughts about the topic and their process in formulating their arguments. Things might get a little heated sometimes, but hey, we're brewing here. (laughs) So Manny went out and listened to the first 17 podcasts. Oh, good. Manny got problems. (laughs) Manny, you binge listening to podcasts. Uh, That's, well, he's helping us. Yeah, he really is. And he's helping you. He said, hey, these ones are good. These ones are good. He doesn't I, I like the, the premise. 17. I like that they tried to structure the podcast uh, differently, right? Yeah. As a yeah. debate. As a debate. Not only that, they didn't just bring on experts that maybe are committed to one side or another. They said, we're going to flip a coin, and right? You have, and, argue, you have to be knowledgeable enough about the other side to argue it. Exactly. Yeah. I think um, Trubaca was on there. Chris and Jared were on there. Oh, That's the they? first time I heard of Opposites of Strike. I haven't listened to much. They did a dual podcasting session. Oh, nice. So G- Chris and Jared went on Opposites Extract, and then they had Meisner and whoever else is an Opposites Extract, I don't know, on the Cat and Cloud podcast. Mm. Gotcha. And they kind of had one session. You know, they recorded, they recorded one, then yeah. recorded the other, and bada boom, bada bang, done. Got it. Double trouble for their audiences. So Manny, thank you so much for recommending... Um, of the opposite distract podcast. Yeah, if you want to hear word battles and dueling opinions. Yeah. 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 Just like that. Just like yeah. you hear here all the time. Yeah. But, but probably formulated but, a little better. Well, people with knowledge. <laughs> yeah, with actual opinions. Yeah. That matter. But we have opinions. That it just don't doesn't matter. matter. No, it yeah. don't matter. No. Yeah, exactly. Rooted so. in fact. And Manny, um, he goes through a lot to keep these recommendations going for us. He's got to do a lot of work. We appreciate you, Manny. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for listening to the entire uh, catalog. Yeah. Tell us which ones are Are on top of the list so we can focus on those. Get us going. Get us going. So anyhow, check out Opposites Extract Podcast. Our coffee review. We've been Mm. drinking Dread Pirate Roberts. I've been talking a little bit about it in the Daily Ristretto. It It is Smuggler's Coffee that was sent to us. Now, for the first time, we're talking about it on the big pot. Actually, we're not not the first time. We've talked about Smuggler's Coffee before. Sure. But now we're talking about we got some coffee in. And it was a gift. Thank you. Yes. And we drank it. And it is? It is a barrel-aged coffee. A barrel-aged coffee. Called Dread Pirate Roberts, yeah, which I, I think I is a cool name. I was expecting to say whether it was good or bad. Give us I know you were. I didn't want to go there yet. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I wanted to say the name because it's a cool name. Dread Pirate Roberts. It comes from The Princess Bride. If you've not seen the movie, read the book, you really need to. You should. The book is a little bit different than the movie, but still, both very good. Oh, good. Can you give us a synopsis on the book? Can you tell us about the differing uh, principles that might impact the storyline between the book and the movie? Mm, mostly when they go to West, Westview, Westview Wesley. <laughs> mostly when they go to rescue Wesley, they kind of um, they have to go through different obstacles inside the castle. Oh, those are the ones that stand out to me that are okay. the most significantly different. There you go. Yeah, William keep Gold. that in mind when you're watching the movie. That a little bit different in the book. A little different. A little bit different. So this was the first time that either of us, either of us. Neither of us, both of us, Mike or Jake, together have tried to barrel. Together. No, we weren't. No, together. we need to make. I think we need to start making that a little more clear. 
not together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a story. We'll go into that next oh, for the oh, coffee yeah. experience. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I've tried a barrel aged coffee. I think you got into a few details on it. Was it bourbon, I believe? A barrel that bourbon aged some bourbon? Bourbon. Drop some green beans in there. Let it rest. Let it soak up all that residual goodness. Bourbon. And then roasted it. And then roast it. And we done ground it and drank it. Grinded it. Grounded it up. And then we brewed it up and then we drank it. And it was excellent. It I, I was mean, it, just a fantastic so fun. cup. Something, it really was. Something that I'd never tasted before. Flavors that you're not going to get from other types of coffees. I agree. I think there was, you, you had a, when we were talking about it, you mentioned it almost feels like you could taste some of the bourbon. But I don't know if it's just your mind or you're just thinking it because, you know, but there is an element, and I, I called it like a maltiness. Like yeah. there was like a, a maltiness, but a very nice, sweet maltiness. And, and I, I just found myself wanting to drink uh, two, three cups. You know, I enjoyed it. It was good. Now, what did you drink those two, three cups in? Oh, I drank them in, I know it's going to blow your mind, but a mug with a handle. Wow. Yeah. And the mug uh, was a little bit of a V shape, a little taper at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and it was a mug that was provided to us by Smuggler's Coffee. Came with the little care package. Wow. And uh, it's an awesome little mug. I yeah. like it. It, it. You kind of called it the perfect mug. The way it fit into your hand was excellent. You could use two fingers. You could use three fingers. And it just lined up because of the angle of the uh, the handle. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was a good size. Yeah. A um, little bit of tulip shape there, narrowing towards the bottom. Yep. And the, uh, the thickness of the mug was consistent throughout, meaning there was no um, thicker ring around the top, which some have. Yeah. Which I think uh, adds uh, the uh, chances of dribbles. You know, sometimes you have this yeah. thick, yeah, and and some people uh, like to lick the side of the mug oh, yeah, when those runaway drops. I do that. Start racing down. I do that everywhere I go. Oop, oop, look out! Look at yeah. I know. Oh, you gotta buddy. get that. Gotta get that. Not why we're out, please. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, uh, I think I did that yesterday, and we went out. Wait, you went what? At the Wild Iris. Oh yeah, our coffee shop. Yeah, we had a coffee experience. It's next. Yeah, it was a great. It was a great segue, and then you had to make it awkward by pausing. No, I was just looking at the time. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. Were you looking at the time? Because I forgot to set the timer. Oh, twenty-one minutes. Twenty-one minutes. In case. So you're... the reason why Mike sets the timer is because the camera will automatically turn off. Uh, it really, it's about uh, tax laws in Europe. It's tax if laws in know. Europe that make it inconvenient for us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because of this, uh, this Canon uh, camera, which is technically a picture still. You know, taker camera, yeah. not an actual video camera. Correct. If it records greater than 30 minutes or longer than 30 minutes, it's classified as a camcorder by European tax law. And the tax standards change. And it's it's more expensive to uh, manufacture, sell, export. So? So a way around that, even though this is purchased uh, in America, it's America. an American model. America. Um, for a manufacturer like Canon to come up with two different models, two different firmware, essentially, depending on where it's sold, it's just easier to all have one set and say, well, we'll limit 30 minutes. This way we avoid having to pay that extra tax. Thank you, Europe. Yeah. Um, and we have to kind of pause every once in a while and Mike's got to go fiddle with the camera and then come back. And turn it back on. All right. So there you go. So Let's do it right now. I think uh, we'll do it right now. I think others out there listening would say, well, why don't you just get a dedicated camcorder um, so you don't have to worry about that nonsense. Oh, because he's a video snob. Well, I like a dual purpose tool. This tool um, kind of fits our needs, does multiple things. And maybe one day when we get a little bit of money, we might get a dedicated no, video recorder. No, we're going to get a dedicated assistant with oh, a video recorder. Somebody else that has one. It, yes. And but we can just do what we do. I think we need to get a $1,000 grinder first, though. It's just something decent. Something decent. Something decent. All right. So... Yesterday, Mike and I went to the Wild Iris. It's a coffee shop in Prescott. Coffee experience. <sighs> it is the first coffee shop that I visited in Prescott. When I first visited Prescott, I went to the Wild Iris. Mm -hmm. I was so underwhelmed. Underwhelmed? What? That I haven't been back in four years. That was like, oh, that was four years ago? Four years ago, seven years ago, something like that. And I got to tell you. It's probably going to be another four to seven years until I go back. Don't say that. Sorry. We, okay, you visited seven years ago when you first... I think we hit it up once. Yeah, seven years ago. It, when, was, it was 2010. Yeah. yeah. And then I think we went there when we used to work together back at the branch. Oh, okay. Once. Okay. 
that I, I vaguely remember. And then we decided, hey, let's go again. Let's check it out. We haven't been there in a while. Yeah, um, and I really wanted to go. So we went. So there you go. Perfect. Moving right. on. <laughs> on to the next. Well, no, let's recap. I think there's some definitely positives that I enjoyed. I think the location's yeah. cool. The location is very it's cool. It's downtown Prescott, Arizona. It's yep. just a little off of the famous Whiskey Rose Strip, so you're yep. not right in the action. It's kind of tucked away. It's next to a creek. But if you are on Whiskey Row and check in the downtown area, the courtyard, courthouse area, mm-hmm. and you search for coffee on the Google, it's easy to find, navigate, get to. Yeah, exactly. On foot. So it's... Uh, which could be said, which is better than some of the coffee shops that are actually on the square. That you can't find? You can't even find mm-hmm. them on the phone. So you're not going to... You, you're a stranger. You're, you're an out-of-towner. You're a visitor. You're stranger. a tourist. So <laughs> yeah. you're going to go... You're going to walk a little further to a place that you can clearly identify mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, kind of looking all around and being like, oh, what is this? Oh, it's in the store. Oh, it's in the store. It's upstairs. It's downstairs. It's tucked behind here. Oh. There it is. Who'd have thunk? Found it. Yeah. Nailed yep. it. So when you walk up to it, they have a nice little courtyard that has some outdoor seating, which is cool. They have a little fountain going. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy that. Um, and then when you walk in, I thought the, I thought it's not my style, but I thought it was done fairly well. And I think we both agreed it was yeah. kind of like a shabby chic or a rustic chic. Yeah. Had elements of, right? Um, Turn of the century furniture, you know, gold frames, chandeliers, but then it also had natural wood, some yeah. beams and yeah. some rustic barn style uh, yeah. weathered wood. I think that's good. Shabby chic. I think this is a good way to put it. And then the preparation In fact, area. I'm going to Google shabby chic while you're talking. Okay, go for it. And then the uh, preparation area where they, the baristas, where they uh, prepare the coffee, they also have a lot of baked goods, is very eclectic, um, all exposed shelving. There's no cabinets. It's all kind of pipe, you know, with wood shelf. I think that's perfect. Shabby chic is perfect. Look at that. Or rustic. I'm looking at yeah. 50 fabulous shabby chic kitchens. That's what I'm looking at on the interwebs on the Google, and that's that's it. It's close. That's a little it. more darker little color darker. palette. than. In fact, it was so dark that we had to use our... Um, iPhone lights. Our, <laughs> our flashlights. Order, our flashlights in order to drink the coffee. Yeah, because it wasn't so weird it was enough darker. that, you know, Jake and I walk in. I'm holding my camera. I've got the mic, the lens. Um, we're ordering coffee. I'm taking random pictures and videos of the yeah. patrons. They're staring at me thinking, what are these weirdos doing? Um, that we had to then get out our spotlights and light up our little espresso shots in the Demitas. Demitas? Demitas. Demitas, yeah. Cups as I took more pictures. You know, and I had to get the angle right. So you kind of got to position yourself right. And that means sticking your butt out. And, you know, people are trying to walk by. I just want to get to the condiment section over there, get a little sugar. You're taking pictures of a mug. Yeah. Awkward. It it was a little awkward. but You did have to kind of get the angle right because the French press was broken. It was an angle that... <laughs> it was struggling. <laughs> it was so let's, struggling. let's back up a little bit more. So We're getting what, ahead of ourselves What are here. the things that you liked going in? Right away, the, the menu was not, too, was not my style, but it was easy it was to unique. navigate. It was presented... In, yeah, it wasn't just a chalkboard, so I appreciated that. Um, I thought they did a good job with the design. Yeah. I, I, thought, it, I thought it was good. Well, it was carried throughout. Oh, well, it was consistent with the theme, but I didn't like it. Yeah, not your thing. They had their cold brew, and I don't want to get too far off onto the cold brew, but in their cold brew, there was a lot of sediment at the bottom. Mm, Interesting. Do you like clean cold brew, or do you like a dirty cold brew? Like, do you like a French press cold brew, or do you like a toddy with a filter cold brew? Do you like a metal screened cold brew, or do you like a paper filtered cold brew? I've never had a cold... Well, no, I take that back. Some of our cold brew, cold war challenges, we've had some sediment at the end. Yeah. Um, but I think some of that sediment was like was um, mocha or yeah. chocolate chalk. They had floaties. Chocolate chalk. The, they had floaties. I'm not a fan of the floaties. I'm not. I like it clean. Clean. Is there something wrong with me? Yes, a little bit. Well, you and you're someone that enjoys a dirty cup too. I do like dirty cups and a dirty mug. But I'm not a big fan of dirty cold brew. I don't know what you it don't is like about, the floaties. I don't know what it is about looking at a bottle and seeing kind of the floaty, like this the the sediment, stuff at the sediment at the bottom that just mm-hmm. kind of doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Well, for any of you that have uh, aquariums and own fish, yeah, you might um, 
the algae is a turn off. <laughs> it might, it might make you think of other things that aren't very appetizing. So maybe we should get little algae eaters, little um, you know those little catfish it. looking things that swim in the bottom and eat up all that sediment as it uh, settles. Yes. That's great. Sediment eaters. Sediment eaters. That's what those uh, cold brew bottles lack. Sediment eaters. Sediment I did, eaters. <laughs> I That's did like, like... There's inches in sediment eaters. <laughs> sediment eaters, yeah. The sediment eaters. Well, I did like how it was a glass bottle and it was reusable. And they said, hey, if you bring it back, we sterilize it and reuse two it. Two bucks. And then they give you two, two bucks. bucks. Two. But you, you have to pay two bucks in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And you get your two bucks back. It's the same way that the milk. We need, we're not going to talk oh, about you mean milk today. In addition to... In addition to, you have to pay $2. So you buy the cold brew at what? Three bucks? What was it? Yeah, it was expensive. And, and you buy the bottle. You own the bottle. You own the bottle. I just want the liquid. I don't want the bottle. Right. <laughs> can, I, see, can I have the liquid and you keep the bottle and, and sediment? there's a balance there because there's some coffee shops, cafes. There's some cafes. <laughs> they, um, they give you glass. And you got to pay for the growler, pay for the bottle. I see. And there's others like press. You pay for everything. And the, it's a plastic bottle. It's not a great bottle. How is Boss? Boss is you have to buy the growler. Oh. And then you can get it put in there. And then you get the advantage, though, of reusing it. Correct. Hmm. Yeah, if you're close. Interesting. But the, the growler is always yours. Yeah. But I thought for sure they were going to rinse it out when I showed up. They didn't rinse it out for me. The growler? No. Well, it's your job to clean it. I, it was. I cleaned it before I showed up. But I would think that they or would just be, ask. Does yeah. it need to be rinsed? Because it, it wild iris. You, when I, we asked about the cold brew, she said, "Will you just bring the bottle back? We clean it, sterilize it. I think they just give you a different it, bottle. Yeah, and they give you a different bottle. They give you a clean new one. They give you a clean or new one. A clean reused. A clean reused and sterilized one. Or uh, uh, yeah, whatever it is, they give you a different one than the one you brought in. It'd be cool to make like some type of discreet mark to see if you can ever get your yeah oh like an orange cactus on the bottom <laughs> is that discreet oh there you are it's been months since i've seen you yeah uh <laughs> so the cold brew we didn't try the cold brew because the sediment cla- i it was nasty looking i wanted to but i just couldn't i couldn't yeah, bring i'd still try it i'd still try it yeah. no but you didn't no because we've we had way too much coffee and That's spent true. enough money so the um the lady at the counter yes Excellent service. Very good. Very engaging. I mean, we were standing there like, well, first we were standing by the cold brew case taking pictures and she's helping other people. But then and as the we whole migrated. Bean. We were looking at the whole bean as well oh, yeah. while we were waiting in line. What kind of beans do they use? What kind of beans? Which they had the beans that they use typically for the cafe, but then they were also featuring another local roaster that we've never heard of. Yes. Single origin, Guatemalan micro lot. So we're that you could not get analyzing them because they have different beans in the hopper. Different beans in the hopper. Different beans in the hopper. But then as we migrated towards the uh, pastry case, yeah. she engaged us. Right away. Even though we were still a good... Can I help you? A few feet hey, what's away. what's going on? What are you guys looking for? Can I be of assistance to you? Exactly. Two, yeah. The two of you two guys together? Yeah. <laughs> I see you there. I see you two together there. I see you. <laughs> and she uh, engaged. Yeah. And she was great the whole time. Yes. She really was. She was fantastic. She was so great that... The pastry case and the counter needed to be removed so that she could have free reign of the cafe mm-hmm. because they would sell a lot more if she was on the opposite side of the pastry case. They would sell a lot more if she could walk around and engage with people. It was almost a, a big crime case. to have her trapped back there. It was like a two foot wide counter that the whoever's there, but yeah. her in particular at this moment could yeah. see over. Yeah. You stand behind the case. I probably would see just her forehead. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it Big was case. it was interesting. She was very good. Yes, she very was. good. And we got espresso. The espresso was not very good. We got espresso in a temitas, and it was it wasn't very good. I'm sorry. Yeah. Their beans they get from uh, Wash. Well, they get them from Washington. Was it Oregon or Washington? Washington. It's gotta Washington? be good. Yeah, they come from Washington. Or or Washington. Or- Washington. Washington. <laughs> no, they come from Washington. Same place. Yeah. But they had a roast date on them. Last. You know. Yeah. No tasting notes, though. No tasting notes. But, uh, yeah, it, it was not for hand me. Hand-blended, though. Those, those beans are hand-blended. Oh, yeah, it was hand-blended. Blended by hand. What does that mean? I don't know. It means that <laughs> Somebody, I, somebody's hand went in those beans makes me think and of mixed the, them together. The processing is usually, uh, a lot of times, it's, uh, they but, use their feet but to help could, promote the process. But you could tell it was a selling point that she was trained in delivering. Oh, those, they, she, our, our roaster hand-blends. His espresso roast. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I didn't ask, well, what does that mean? What does that even look like? I think for me, the difference is hand graded or quality checked because that's where a lot of, uh, you can actually improve the quality. If somebody's looking through the coffee and trying to find defects or beans that didn't roast properly or elephant ears and they're picking them out. Is that close to being hand blended? I don't know. I, I don't really I don't know. know either. I'm not sure. I assume you have your varying roasts and you put them in a bucket or some type of mixer and, or maybe not, maybe put them in a box it, box it. Man, we're just mixing words up. I left know, and we're so bombing this. Maybe you just put them together and using your hands. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't know if that would be the most efficient. But the for me, the espresso was wasn't bad. I've had it was not it wasn't very bitter compared to some of the other That's espresso true. shots that I've had. That's in true. Town. But it wasn't very flavorful. I was really hoping yeah, for some. Nice. I was really hoping for some chocolate and peanut butter. There's a little gnat that we just cannot <laughs> destroy, and it's buzzing around and bothering. That's uh, great, Mike and I. So it's great. Anyhow. I could drink it. it. It just wasn't any specific flavors standing out, right? Yeah. Nothing hit me. Yeah. But it wasn't bitter. I could drink it straight. You tried adding yeah. a little. I added a little cream. I'm sorry. I added a little sugar. A little I, sugar. I drank half of it. Cubano. And then I added a little sugar to it to see half what that Cubano. would do. And it made it worse. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't very good. It wasn't good without sugar. It wasn't good with sugar. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I would go there. It wasn't very good. And it's just, you know, you're paying $2.50 for a shot of espresso. It's just... It was a, it was a dopio, though, right? For a double shot it of espresso. It was a double. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't go back and get it again, nor would I say, hey, go go down there and get a dopio. But that's the foundation that your mixed drinks are based off of. Mm-hmm. And it's not very good. So. It could be better. So I think the extraction... Was good. Was good. Yeah. I do because I don't think it wasn't bitter and it wasn't sour. No. I think it was. It was a well pulled shot. I think so. We got to give the barista her props. Is my assessment. I, I think the roast and the blend being an espresso hand blended, um, you know, it's like you were massaging with your fingers, right? I there. was giving you air quotes. I hope you got that. I hope we got that on camera. Quad, Mikey, quad massaging, quotes. Massaging the beans. Oh yeah, hand hand massage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think they're just uh, left more to be desired. Yeah, a and little they, bit more, huh? So a little bit more to be desired. A little bit. And more. then we also what ordered a French press. Why did we get we the French press? Sh- so we could share it because it was. <laughs> no. uh, it was there was a, a reason. It was a double, and that was the only way that we could try. Okay, they had whole bean, whole bean. Um, that that locally roasted Guatemalan single origin micro lot. There you go. Fair trade. I asked, can we get that on espresso? They said no, because the hopper is full of other beans. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. You don't have any other grinders? That's the only one? We have this hand grinder. Perfect. You're welcome to it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so no single origin, one espresso only, but how can we try that one? She said, well, we could do, put it in a French press for you. Yeah. And so I said, done deal. So Which was very cool that they, I think that was test one, is can we try this bean any way, shape, or form? Espresso would be great, but... Anyway. And the answer is yes. Because sometimes you go to these shops and they're selling these other beans or they have special offerings like, oh, this looks good. Can I try this before I buy this? Yeah. No. No, you can't. You must commit Do you know what it bucks. tastes like? No idea. Have not you ever had clue. this before? No idea. So the, the staff was definitely not disengaged. The staff was, was yeah. engaged. They knew what was going on. They knew what they were selling. They knew how they could serve it. Mm-hmm. It was that part. was The service was great. Yeah, it was good. It, it sure was. And it was exciting being able to. I was excited to try this this new roaster and this new Guatemalan micro lot. I, I got to tell you though, I think the barista was a little annoyed with us, even though there was nobody in line. Just the, all of our questions because we weren't just asking, our bantering, just our talking with her about the coffee and and you know asking about different drinks and how they're prepared and what about this because there's some stuff on the menu that we'd never really seen before. Yeah, we did ask some questions. The, there there were some items on the menu that we had hadn't heard yeah. of. And I think it was reasonable. I mean, there was nobody in line. Exactly. We, we took liberty. Chatting. We did take the liberty of asking about the whole beans that you have on sale and how can we try them. Yeah. So, but when she delivered our drinks, because I picked them up, I think she gave me the look like, I hope you trip and fall. Spill all your drinks. <laughs> well, and I don't know your, about that. I think, I hope you trip and I, fall and knock your gold tooth out. I would laugh at you. In our <laughs> round, our second round of drinks. I know, we went, spent $40 there. Yeah, we did. 40 bucks. I'm just saying, you don't want to chit-chat about coffee, working at a coffee shop? Here's the thing. But the, the she did. The the gal at the counter. Sure. I, I have, I, I pick up what you're, I pick up what you're throwing or something like that. 
Yeah, you picked but them up. But <laughs> in our second round, when we were picking them up, uh, yeah. I was there at the counter, and I my interpretation is that she did not want to be on camera. And so she was oh. trying. I think she wanted to engage, but she was afraid that if she was too engaging, this guy walking around taking pictures and That's, video. You know what? I I guess I I never think the fact that you could be intimidating with your camera. Oh, it's absolutely intimidating. Because I am not intimidated. That your camera loves me. <laughs> you are a rare case, my friend. But I even I was like when I was standing there, you you uh, left to go to the restroom. Because you do that from time to time. I do that from time to time. And that, please tell everybody about it. I'm like, it. I'm going to take the opportunity to just get some, I thought it'd be nice to get like a little video, video, a video, video, video footage. It's, it's <laughs> different. <laughs> it's, it's a voodoo and canon together. Uh, Working together to make voodoo. <laughs> right. Oh, I got to stop. Her. Is this a new, uh, I'm gonna new Charlie video hosting? Abs. Is this a new video <laughs> hosting site? Voodio. It's like Vimeo, only it's Voodio. Voodio. Welcome to Voodio.com. This is Jacobo. I am your host, Jacob Goble. Goble. We specifically feature Voodio. B-roll of coffee shops. And we, we, and that makes sense now. That totally makes sense. She was just embarrassed that we were there with your camera sticking in everybody's face. I think a You're little bit. You're such a jerk. Well, I was taking shots, and then I asked the barista. You were, you were taking shots at people. I said, do you mind if we take shots? She's like, no, please do. Um, I, the, late, the gal at the our, counter. The main, the, the one offering um, the register. Yeah, the register. The, yeah. Not the barista. No. Who, was, who preferred to, now that, now that makes plenty of sense, she was trying to hide behind the espresso machine. I think so, because yeah. when she brought the drinks, I could see she wanted to engage, and I said, oh, thank you very much. She wanted to say, oh, you're absolutely welcome. But she was reserved, and she didn't want to make much eye contact because um, I'm holding this camera. Yeah. It's not a small camera either with the lens no, and the no. mic. And No, you're overcompensating hey, with a big lens. We're with the local courier. Can, <laughs> we're doing a piece. Can we ask you some questions about your coffee and what it means to you to be a barista? Yeah. And, you know, that is kind of the first thing that Mike, he, he threw down the gauntlet right away when we walked in there. And he said, can I take some pictures? We're, um, we're coffee shop reviewers and we're going to rate your cafe and write stuff quite about say that. you. <laughs> <It's a> really, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't quite like that. I'm teasing. Uh, I, just, I'm teasing. I think it's better to give some, uh, to me, uh, having wielded a camera for many a years, it's easier when you just are upfront about it and you let people know, hey, we yeah. just, we, we, we pop around Arizona, take different pictures of yeah. coffee shops and we love coffee. We enjoy the experience. We enjoy That's interacting. Because she asked where we were from. Yeah. Because we look like a couple I, of tourists. I live about a mile away, actually. We, we look like. <laughs> well, we've never been there, as far as she knows. Tourists. <laughs> We're not regulars. If you love coffee this much and you haven't been to the Wild Iris, where have you been? Where have you been? We've been rating everybody else. Yeah. You're we've up. Been, we've been drinking you ban at the house. <laughs> Where you ban. So, anyway, we got that. We got the French press. That makes a lot of sense now, actually, that you. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I think it's all tied together. But I think that's a big element of it. Um, it's either fight or flight. Some people are like, okay, I got to yeah. smile. I got to perform. I got to do this. And uh, the person working the register was on point. The one knew she could hide in the background a little bit. And uh, I think just went for it. So French press, did you like it? No. Didn't care for it. Nope. We didn't finish the French press. We did the Tim Wendelbo method. I know. We let it sit. The crooked French press <laughs> it was so, screen. It was. I was the afraid French, the French that the grounds device, were going to shoot out past the side the of it. The French press device that we were served in. It was poor. It was broken. Yeah, I don't think it was broken. I think because you can take them apart. I don't know if you've ever done that. You can take yes. the screen. I think it just yes. needed to be tightened. Why didn't you take it apart and tighten it? Though? Because it was already submerged in boiling water. Oh. It looked broken to me. <laughs> it could have been broken. I didn't expect it. It just looked like it needed some tightening. But yeah. The screen was was cattywampus, as they say. Oh, yeah, of course. So when you go to press it, it looked like only one side was pushing the grounds, and the rest were going to sneak past yeah. the, uh, the other side. So the coffee wasn't bad. It was good. I could tell it was fresh. But I think it, for us, it just, um, the flavor notes that it we were... It was roasted too dark. Yeah. I yeah, think, that's what it was. It was a single origin... Micro lot, Guatemalan, well, everything know, that we so, do expect, so special. But, but all the flavors were roasted out of it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that, but I can't sit here and sip on the King Cup and then say that it was in the same league. It wasn't. Yeah. I'm I think sorry. it could be improved. It yeah. could be improved. 
So yeah. that uh, that's that's all we've got thoroughly, to say about that. Thoroughly had the flavors cooked out of it. Good job. So that was round one. Yeah. Round one. Oh, we so I got a bagel. Bagels. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Interesting. We finish each other's Jinx. sandwiches. Jinx. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our mental synchronization can have but one explanation. Anyhow. Oh, good. The uh, reason good why line. we got bagels is because they were cheap. Cheaper than other items on the menu. I was eyeing the quiche. I was eyeing the quiche as well, but the way they had it presented, it just it didn't look as appealing as maybe it could have been. I and thought it looked good. They had some other items there, but they were just they were kind of pricey, like five, six dollars for small pieces of cake and dollar fifty for a tiny little cookie. It just it seemed I don't know. I don't want to say it was overpriced because that may or may not be. Yeah. You know, they know their profit margins. Sure. They know what they got to do. They know do. what sells, what doesn't. But for some reason, and I'm normally not real sensitive to. Not when it comes to your cookies. No, no. I mean, like I walk in, I'll get chocolate croissants and I'll try Danish. I'll try whatever they got. Right. But for some reason, when I was looking at it, it just didn't strike me as being worth the money yeah yeah it just wasn't something was off and i don't know how to articulate it i don't know exactly what it was but i was hungry too something was off the mini cheesecake rolls look good what i saw that looked best for the money was a bagel for two dollars and fifty cents yeah it was a good choice so so we got two of those was good so we got two bagels yeah i enjoyed it it was good so that was round one round two we thought what else can we get we're leaving packing it up yeah i gotta bring something home for the missus so I brought her an iced mocha. Yeah, we got two of those. And she didn't finish hers. No? No, nah, she didn't like it. Oh, Lindsay, we got, I got her the vanilla. Or no, not the vanilla. The white chocolate. The white the chocolate. The iced white mocha. Yeah, she drank it. She thought it was fine. She thought it was okay? Yeah, no problem there. And then we also tried, you tried. I tried a Vietnamese iced coffee. But hold the phone. It was cold brew. Because we thought, when we saw it on the menu, I'm like, I wonder if they used the fin. Right? Because right? that's how you prepare Vietnamese Viet- coffee. So we Thank asked, you. Did, did you use a fin? And she said, how about a ha? And then she's like, can you read the menu? It says cold brew, bro. No, oh, did it say? It said cold brew on the menu. Yeah, but it said so- cold brew and condensed milk. Okay, so we're adding condensed milk to cold brew and calling it... Vietnamese coffee. That's a stretch. It was a stretch because it wasn't made with a fin. It's not made the, the way that it normally yeah. would be. To me, that's all part of it. So I don't know. Maybe that's just personal opinion, but yeah. it wasn't made the fin. It's not using the brew method that they use. Right. So so therefore, it's not Vietnamese coffee. Kind of like when you sell your cold-pressed espresso, but it wasn't made in an espresso it's not machine. Espresso. Yeah. It's not espresso. Call it what you want to call it, but it's not espresso. <gasps> but don't call it espresso. <laughs> but don't call it espresso if you don't make it with an espresso machine. Is that too much uh, to ask? Well, and what's pressed about it? I always want cold press. I, in my mind, I thought it was a new process I've never heard of where it's like there's a, a machine that it's is. It's a secret process. They're not going to tell you what it is. Well, yeah, it's we espresso. A secret process. Where they press cold water through the portafilter instead of hot. Still uses pressure. It's just cold no, water. They use, it's cold brew in big vats. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it was. So what did you think of the drink, though? Uh, I, I finished it out of principle. Out of, what principle is that? That. You know, you bought that round, and I felt like if I threw it away, I would be dishonoring you. Oh. So I drank it all, but it wasn't very good. You didn't care for it? Nah. And I tried the co... Cochata. Co... co or, the cochata. Co- yeah, because cochata. it was orchata yep. with cold brew. There you go. Yeah. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was cochata. good. It was sweet, and, you know, I I could have finished it, but at that point, my caffeine level, I think, was a little high. And um, yeah, you almost went man down. <laughs> I didn't Mikey feel. Mikey almost went man down from drinking too much well, coffee yesterday. I don't know if I don't think it was the coffee. No, I don't think so. I think it was too much coffee on an empty stomach because I hadn't eaten much that day. I mean, the bagel was about the only thing I'd eaten. That's the only thing I had eaten. And too. then we're rocking espresso, and then we're rocking the French press, and then we're rocking corchata. Well, and I think. Uh, driving around. I never do well as a passenger to begin yeah, with. Yeah, that's true. You, we, I was driving, and it was raining, and people were driving like it was raining out. And we were trying to find a post office that was open. Yeah, that was great, too. So anyway, so I recovered quite quickly. I just felt a little off. I was like, do you feel off? You're like, no, I'm good. So I'm like, okay, I'm good, too, then. Yeah. Yeah. Mental power. You are good, too. So what about the, the lady that was taking our orders as well? We left an impression on her. Do you think, Mike? The lady? 
Yeah. The, the, at Wild Iris? Well, I think so. Um, I think if we're honest, you know, it's something that Jake and I encounter frequently. And it's... Yeah. I don't know if it's just... I don't really know what pr- prompts it, that we're so excited to be in a coffee shop and we're analyzing the decor and we're analyzing the drink and we're engaging that they think we might be a couple. Yeah. Yeah, that happens quite frequently. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know why uh, it happens either. But we we go places, and I don't know, maybe it's because we do finish each other's sentences. Sandwiches. And we have the same thing, right? What is he? I'll have the same. <laughs> maybe. I, I don't know what it is, but then it's like, I I'm going to take it home. I, I'm going to take this iced coffee home. And I thought for sure I said, because the missus won't be happy with me if I show up empty-handed. And she said, yeah, he'll be very disappointed. Yeah. And, and I that's didn't what catch I thought, that either. Right. I didn't catch that either. So yeah, I don't know. And it's nothing new. It could be though when you flattered. No, I'm flattered <laughs> when um, we're trying the uh, French press, and then you're like, "I'm gonna try it with cream and sugar," and then you're like, "Here, taste this," and then you're <laughs> and you're <laughs> sharing me. You think that was it? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I don't want to be rude. <laughs> uh, I spin the cup around, Mister Germaphobe. Right? <laughs> we're uh, trying to analyze the coffee, though. We are without being uh like. A punk to say, hey, can I get another glass? Can I get... Because, I mean, if it were me, I'd be like, I want a a mug for to try it neat. And then I want a mug to try it with cream and sugar. And then, you know, I want to split them up. But... We don't have that uh, available to us. I don't want to be a pest. So, So. anyhow. So, that's the deal. That was... It was fun. We had a good time at Wild Iris. Uh, I wish the coffee would have been better. I think you can go there. Service was great. Food was pretty good, I think. Service great. Coffee bad. Coffee great, service bad. I don't know. It seems to be a more often than not recurring theme. It does. It is very hard to find great service and great coffee. Bringing those two worlds together. Yeah. And I can only think of Press and Peixota. So that moves us on to our Orange Cactus Coffee update. We are selling a saguaro. It is a category of coffee that we think holds up well to cream and sugar and is a little less expensive and is kind of an everyday drinker. We want a traditional flavor profile that anyone can enjoy, that every man's can. You're correct about all those points except one. Which one? It's, um, it's, it, we sell it less, but it, it's oh, okay. just as expensive. Well, we, yes, when I say it's cheaper, we sell yeah. it cheaper than the King Cup. Exactly. The King Cup is a category of coffee that we sell, and it is currently... Uh, an Ethiopian, mm-hmm. and we want it to be a more modern, third wave coffee uh, flavor profile sure. that gives you a little more lemon, a little more lime, a little more stone fruit, a little more modern flavors. Touch of floral, just uh, a lot, lot going on. The third flavor profile or category that we want to add is a naturally processed bean that will give you blueberries to the face. Yeah, some berry. Berry. So, give us an update. How's the search for the natty going? And we're trying to figure out what cactus is going to represent that category. Yeah. Um, I haven't found it. Okay. Oh, Moving right along. <laughs> I haven't found it. Well, see, <laughs> uh, there's some nice uh, Ethiopian naturals hitting the market right now. Um, I believe in one of the books, I want to say it was maybe even Kevin Sinat's book, he says it's nice Kev, legend. when sourcing green beans to, you don't want to get, uh, the first offering of the season always, but I don't know if that's as true anymore. They say like there's a sweet spot right in the middle. Yeah. Um, I don't know how true that is, honestly, but um, I'm using that as an excuse to not jump on the first ones that come out and waiting, just holding off to see if there's anything that uh, hits the market that's just got that much more of a wow, a little bit higher score. And because uh, I think that's what we're, that's what, that's yeah. what we're, we're yeah. Yep. Do yep. we need I'm to done throw talking. the scores out there? Do we need to advertise that we serve, we only wrote, we only source the world's finest eh. beans and we're, you know, um, according to SCA standards, we are using only the best beans. Mm-hmm. Do people sure. want to hear that? Do we, should we say that? When you think of that, I, I think there's value there and we could have a, a conversation about it. But my first thought is Tommy boy, why do you need to put a warranty on the box? Do you remember Tommy boy? Yeah. There was that whole thing where he was selling um, his dad's brake pads, and they didn't have a warranty on the box. I like your line. I like your prices. But there's a problem. 
There's no guarantee on the box. But it's not on the box. It should always be on the box, comforting you, calling out, I'm good, I'll never let you down, but if I do, I'm going to make things all better. My customers need to see that little label, look at them right. right. You want to talk about guarantees, then... Fellas, you just ran out of time. Chicken wings. Let's think about this for a sec, Ted. Why would somebody put a guarantee on a box? Hmm, very interesting. Go on, I'm listening. Here's the way I see it, Ted. Guy puts a fancy guarantee in a box because he wants you to feel all warm and toasty inside. Yeah, makes a man feel good. Of course it does. Why shouldn't it? You figure you put that little box under your pillow at night, the guarantee fairy might come by and leave a quarter. Am I right, Ted? <laughs> What's your point? The point is, how do you know the fairy isn't a crazy glue sniffer? Building model airplanes, says the little fairy. Well, we're not buying it. He sneaks into your house once, that's all it takes. Next thing you know, there's money missing off the dresser and your daughter's knocked up. I've seen it a hundred times. But why do they put a guarantee on the box, then? Because they know all they sold you was a guaranteed piece of That's all it is, isn't it? Hey, if you want me to take a dump in a box and mark it guaranteed, I will. I got spare time. But for now, for your customer's sake, for your daughter's sake, you might want to think about buying a quality product from me. Okay, I'll buy from you. Oh, that's what? And others did. And, you know, he had this whole sales pitch that they only did that because they needed to win you over when, really, the tried and true company has already proved that they're good. So yeah. we're not tried and true yet. No. So do we need to have a warranty on the box? Do we need to say everything? Um, I don't know. Good that was, question. That was kind of a whole sideline. I like a good question. I like Tommy Boy. All but right. my point is, I think it's good to have some information out there. Yes. Here's what we're about. We Because we do believe in high quality beans. We believe in um, sourcing. I mean, your write-up that you've done on the... Yes. On the beans is a good write-up. I thought it was enough information for people to recognize the beans for what they are. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. But I think, you know, we can continue to promote that. When we ever, if ever, we redo our website and there's a landing page, it will yeah. say, boom, yeah. here's what we do. Yeah, we need to do Here's the type of coffee that, that interests yeah. us, and here's why we think you'll like it. Um, I think it's just part of communicating clearly. Um, and I think there's a balance for us, right? Because we don't want to always... We don't like talking about ourselves. We don't like to, we don't like being the one saying, "Hey, this is the best stuff in the world." We want you to feel what we feel and get the right. enjoyment we get out of it. Right. But we want it to come naturally through your own, um, yeah, right, your own response. Exactly. Not because we're telling you that this is the best. Right. And if you're not having the best experience with it, there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. There's though. nothing wrong because you're you. always right. Mike and I are wrong. <laughs> you are always right. I think there's balance in the middle. So, brew tip of the week. Oh, we have one? Yeah. So, extremes. When you take your extraction to the extreme, like vanilla ice, to the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, light up a stage of wax a chump like a candle. I'm with you. You can learn what an under and an over extracted cup tastes like. And sure then can. you can, once you know what the extremes are, you can better identify the subtleties in the, in the middle. Great summary. Thank you. Great, great summary. That was not a summary. It was an intro for you to take over. You explained it all. Oh, wow. Well, moving I right along the, then. <laughs> I think that was it. Uh, no, we threw that in there because I thought it fit nicely too with the opposites extract recommendation. You know, just uh, dueling opposites. -bum -bum so that I, was great, Mike. I tied it in. Yeah. 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 I, but I feel I had to explain it, so it probably wasn't as good as I, I was well, envisioning. Well, if you would have put brew cups at opposite sides of extraction... I would have Ooh. got it instead of brew cups at extreme sides of extraction. I just made a quick note in there. Yeah, I knew what it meant, but... That's why I lobbed you, you a softball, and you're bunting it again instead of knocking it out of the park. I explained it. Now yeah, they know. But you brought it attention all to ties the explanation together. instead of just, boom, taking the mic and just dropping it. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. This Total transparency. This may be the last time that we are together on the podcast. <laughs> you wish you speaking wish speaking of opposites yeah. and extraction you're gonna get Manny's gonna be all worried now he's gonna think you're serious <laughs> I am serious worry away uh, no the truth of the matter is I think it's a good exercise one that I came across I can't remember who recommended it but purposely brew an under extracted cup 
purposely brew an over-extracted cup. Um, you know, go super fine on the grind, super coarse, taste them, and that will help solidify what those taste like. So yeah. when yeah. you're trying to pull it out, when you're trying to shoot for that perfect cup, that perfect extraction, you'll taste those subtleties a little bit more. And it will help you say, okay, we're a little bit on, you know, the underside or the overside. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a good exercise and one worth doing, especially if you're trying to dial in a new brewer, a new method, a new grinder. New bean, new whatever. Yeah. And one thing that I remember Manny telling us, it's better to waste that coffee up front than day after day having unsatisfied trying to cups. Explore it. Yeah. yeah. Just get it out of the way. Get your cup right so that the next morning you're excited because now you've got it dialed in. Yeah. So dump it yeah, and, uh, and give it a back go. to it. Exactly. Yeah. So last, last thing. Last thing. Coffee I'm not, history. I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. We ain't got, we, where else are we going to go? Coffee history. Oh, coffee history. Boom, boom, boom. Coffee history with Michael Kincaid. Yeah, kind of over reminiscent anyway. Today's coffee history is brought to you by Percolators. Percolators were invented in 1978 by the famous John Perk. John Perk. This is from Kevin Sinat. I just made that all up. The art and... Oh. It sounded good, though, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> John Perk. No, buddy, I'm going to let you read because you do such better. We're in the 70s and beyond. Right. Last time in Coffee History, we talked about coffee meeting the Industrial Revolution. This is Kevin Sinat's book, The Art and Craft of Coffee, an enthusiast's guide to selecting, roasting, and brewing exquisite coffee. And we're going to throw links to it in the show notes out there. The 70s and beyond. In the 1970s, the focus shifted from convenience back to taste. Baby boomers born between 1944 and 1961 embraced specialty foods as part of the return to natural self-absorbed diets and increased leisure time or leisure time, as some people like to say. Hmm. The new focus touched on every aspect of home cuisine, including coffee. Coupled with this consumer trend was the invention of the air-assisted small-batch coffee roasters. Now, even shopping malls could house fresh, roasted coffee beans. Plus, the coffee shop alternative lifestyle image fit baby boomers who had grown up with beatniks reading poetry in urban coffee houses. Coffee house culture emerged in American cities such as Seattle and Boston, Berkeley and Berkeley in California. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Seattle and Boston, period. Berkeley, California based Pete's coffee and tea founded by Dutch immigrant Alfred Pete mm -hmm. is most often credited for the specialty coffee revolution. But the rise of specialty coffee meant more than a return of social coffee houses. Small batch roasters began investigating how to find the best beans during the 19th and much of the 20th century. Coffee growing countries encouraged selling beans from country to country rather than from farm to roaster. New relationships formed. Specialty green coffee buyers began purchasing micro lots and requesting particular farms beans. Small farms started earning awards and honors for their beans. Specialty coffee appliances underwent a revolution as well. Automatic drip brewing machines replaced the electronic percolator invented by Tom Perk. Peter Perk, what was his name? <laughs> Uh, I don't made know. Up. As John Perk. John Perk, which was once a mainstay in most American households and accused by many connoisseurs of destroying the subtler coffee tastes. Mm. You know, speaking of which, there is a great article at thecoffeerecipe.com about percolators. Is there? And yeah, I think it's a, a, a great article. Nice. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. You should check it out. So, well, good. There you go. So, Pete's. At the forefront in the 70s. There you go. Bringing the... There you bringing the heat. You know, the rising tide of the third wave. I thought it was Pete bringing the heat. That's just as good. Wow. But one thing, you read a line that I thought was interesting, that the encouragement of countries to sell coffee to each other instead of a farm to roaster. Yeah. Now we're seeing a focus on... Yeah. Farm to roaster. Yeah. Producer sure are. directly we to sure are. roaster, to cafe, you And know. we're seeing that it's challenging in certain countries because you're moving the country out of the equation. Mm -hmm. And that means they're losing money on the deal and they're loath to Not give up that. money nope. in certain countries. Sure. It was like, a huge nah, industry. We're making profit. If we let you sell directly, you're, we're not, we're not going to get our cut. Yep. And you got to be certified first. That cut would typically go back to the farmers. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yes. So that's coffee history for the week. Yeah. What Thanks, else you Jake. got, Mikey? Are we going to drop the news now? Drop the news now? Yeah. I think we're done. Yeah. It's, yeah, but is it one and done? Are we starting that? Are we starting? That's a question I'm asking you. I don't know. Are we deciding now on air? I thought we already decided. I thought the decision was already made. I think the decision was made. I don't know if the timing was. So, Oh, okay. Well, we can then here. edit it back three minutes <laughs> and we'll just just drop it, quit it, rock it. No, I think it's good. I think it's good. We can throw this out there. Full disclosure, right? We talk about everything. Yeah. So what we're talking about is shifting it up a little bit. Yeah. Dialing it back. Yeah. Reallocation of resources. Um, analyzing the FTE and figuring out where yeah. we're losing money and who can be eliminated um, and what kind of talent we can hire. All that to say, I think we're cutting it back to one a week for the main show. And the reason is, is we would like to... What are you doing? You're breaking your mic over there. Yeah, it's just You're the, popping. The, mic was, the mic was crooked. I know. Yeah. Okay. So that Jake and I have been talking about just going to one a week uh, for many different reasons, but one of which is we want to focus on creating other content, uh, such as videos, um, more brew guides, more yeah. tips, our website needs help, um, all the things that we're like, we need to do and we'd like to focus yeah. on. Um, we thought maybe just cutting the... Or, or cutting back on the main show to one a week. I think you still want to do the ristrettos. Yeah. You still want to do the dailies. Yeah, well, to be real honest with you, Mike only agreed to doing two shows a week for the first eight weeks. The reason why he did that is because I sold him on this concept yeah, that I got from some of these internet podcast <laughs> masters. Yes. And they said, step hey, by step guide. if you go twice a week you have a better chance, or actually, I mean, it was almost guaranteed what it sounded like, of being listed in iTunes New and Noteworthy. Yes. You put out enough volume, they're going to notice great. you. Let's do it. So Mike did eight weeks with me, and then he's like, are we at New and Noteworthy? And I'm like, no. <laughs> really I just daily. kept my mouth shut, and we kept recording kept, two kept podcasts wrong. a week. And that was kind of never really our design. Our design, our goal was just to do one a week, which is still a lot. But then, so anyhow, so Mike finally hit me up, and he's like, hey, uh, what's up with going back to what's, what's up with the original plan of doing one a week? And so I was like, well, Manny wants more. <laughs> and then he's like, uh, okay, what about going back to once a week? And then we got some more feedback from you guys. So thank you. Somebody said, Hey, it's tough to keep up. It's tough to keep up with everything that you're doing. You keep recommending more podcasts. I'm listening to those podcasts. Right, right. And then you keep throwing more content out. If I miss a week, I'm swamped. And so we don't want to overwhelm you. And we're going to cut it back to one podcast a week. Yeah. That's the number one reason is because the feedback that we got, sorry, Manny, more people have asked for less than more. I'm still going to keep the daily ristretto going. Yeah. And I feel like uh, I can go longer in the daily ristretto if I want to. A little more liberty. A little more liberty there. Well, and we're also going to try and keep getting uh, questions for Scott Rayo. Yep. And whenever that is, we're just going to plug it in. We'll plug well, it in. It's not going to replace anything. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. I'll let you. I and the second done. thing is we want to, we have not really tried to sell our coffee online. Mm. And a lot of you are roasting and building your own business, you've talked about starting your own roastery, you've talked about you know, starting a podcast and a blog, and we've tried to help as much as we can there, but we are not being practitioners and actively trying to market and sell our coffee. Yeah, We're just building a brand. We're not trying to do any sales. We're just doing marketing, no sales. So now we're going to try and focus a little bit more effort on trying to sell our coffee. Sure. And of course, we're going to report back to you. Exactly. Um, but we, it, it was an element that was missing from our business. And that's not really fair to you guys either because some of you want to know what's the blueprint, what's the plan. What's working. Like I what's just, not? just sent out a package this week, got some feedback from another businessman who said, when your box showed up, I totally, I had to, I have to rethink everything. He was inspired. And, you know, we're trying to give you a wow in the mail. Mm -hmm. And so that means some of our audience is looking and seeing, does this work? If it works, I'm going to do it. If it doesn't, I'm not. Yeah. And so we're going to continue to be transparent with you about everything that we're doing. And we'd like to have a little more time to focus on selling coffee. Yeah. 
That's a great point, Jake. I think that was one of the main factors is we want to be able to, you know, pursue and, and put into place and execute our plan and bring you along with us. Yeah. Um, one of the things we kind of came at it backwards, like, all right, we don't make that much right now per sale. Yeah. If, uh, you know, really nothing. I mean, the, the margin is, is almost non-existent and that's not it's how not you run eligible. a business. So we're like, yeah. how do we improve that margin? Do we buy cheaper grade coffee? Nah, not really comfortable with that. Not feeling right. that. Well, one of the things we concluded is, is that if we can take advantage a little bit of scale, yeah. buy more boxes, buy more bags, buy a greater amount of green beans, we can get those prices down and our margins up to where we're actually making a little bit of money. Right. Which right. is the point. And for those of you Which out there listening, the business, because you guys want to know, how can you make money? How can you make money? Um, so how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need to start selling more coffee. We, we need, need to the do demand. A job. We need to actually be about it, not just talk about it. We need the demand to go up. So that's what we're trying to do. So that we can say, okay, we need to order more bags. We're, we're roasting like crazy. We need to order 500 pounds of green. Um, until we have that, yeah. I, I don't think um, just dropping all that money uh, would be smart. Yeah. So that's our approach. Our approach is let's let's utilize the tools we've got. Let's try and sell more locally, um, you know, throughout the the country, internationally, wherever, and, um, and report back to you. and document exactly how we're doing it. And document so, how you do it, and so yeah. some of that comes with wanting to create short little videos, um, more pictures. Um, I don't know, just revamp some of our website, and that takes time. And one of the things we can do is cut back on, on the two podcasts just to one. And I was also going to say, I think it will also enable us with the one to maybe um, spend a little more time on that as well. Yeah. It, it just in, if we want to get interviews lined up, if we want yeah. to do. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get a little, you might get a little longer podcast because right now we're an hour and 10 minutes, which is a little long. And we have a little more we're liberty. Gonna tr- we're going to try and keep it to an hour. Exactly. Yeah. But if we got something that's a good topic or a good guest, maybe it's not as big a deal. So, because it's just one a week. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going for it. All right. And we'll. That's the real. And yeah, if you got questions about that or feedback, hit us up. Please do. Or as we go through this, you think of ways that we can better promote or be better businessmen or, or I don't do something better, different. Or uh, if you've got something you want to try, but you're afraid to try it and you want us to do it instead, <laughs> let Jake know. You can recommend that as well. And we'll He'll see. try we'll anything. See. At least once. Just about. Just about. <laughs> so. All right, so we appreciate you listening. Uh, Thanks so much, guys. Have a good day, good evening, good morning, depending on whenever you're listening. And good night. Adios. All right, thank you so much for listening. Show notes are available at orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash episode 70. That's orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash episode 70. Thank you so much for listening. If you've got feedback on our decision to switch to one full length podcast episode a week or just anything else you've got going on, questions for Scott Rayo, um, anything at all, hit us up. Jake at orangecactuscoffee.com, Facebook, Twitter, and what else? What else? Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, all of it. Talk to you later.